sure. You'd like a loan for what amount, sir? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. For the following purpose? I'm putting out my first record album. Well, I really, I've got to borrow money somewhere, so. You see, this is your first record album. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you decide to do this sort of thing? Well, I worked on music all my life. And I finally uh, got a chance to make this record uh, through this company, and so I thought I better do it now. And I, see, your last name is Robertson. Robertson. Joseph D. Robertson. Do you rent, room or own your own home? Own my own home. Own your own home. Log cabin. Name name of employer. Self employed. For your self employed. Mm -hmm. For how many years? Just about all my life. Now, your occupation is uh, stonework. Stonework. What kind of stonework? Uh, well, I do. Hill stone dry walls. No, I have a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, now, security offered. Uh, what security do you have for this loan? Well, I have a McCullough machine, sir. It's a 10 ton McCullough. It's all for $280. Chainsaw? No, I have a Willie's Jeep. 59 Willie's Jeep. 1959? Mm hmm. Pretty good shape. So your age is? 44. 44. Don't you think this is a little late in years to be starting with your first record? I don't know. There's quite a lot of fellas that started out in their 40s. Mm -hmm. play the fiddle when I was six years old. I was sick in bed and father he handed me the fiddle. He said, here, he said, do something to keep your mind back to fight. So I went ahead and I started working on that. And worked all my life playing the square dances. And Sister Dorothy, she plays with me all the time. Well, the mother and father, they both they saw on the fiddle a little too. Music all through the family. Well, I finally got I'm about 40 years old. I said, well, I'm not getting no younger. And the muscles all pulled out from wrestling rocks. I figured I better try to make a record, see if I can get something easier going here. So I said, well, couldn't get anybody to help me. And I said, well, I'll pay for it out my own pocket if I have to. So I finally called up the Beers family. And they give me a phone number and I got a hold of this company and worked all about a year in order to get my first record out. I guess that's about the size of it. So I have to pay down on this. Okay, it'll be uh, uh, we charge for the thousand records. It's eighteen hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, usually, what happens is is uh, the artist pays the whole thing, mm -hmm. and then we can get it right into production. Uh, we have in the past um, allowed the people to pay half. Uh, as he starts the record and half point against the record. Mm -hmm. That that's, uh, seems to work out pretty well, too. It's a great genius there for me to never get money back on something like that. 
I think definitely, yeah. Um, especially if you have a thousand records, um, and you will be buying them from us for about a dollar eighty-five a piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you'll sell them probably for nothing less than four fifty or five dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to get that money back, you only have to sell 350 records. Take me a year to make that much money. Yeah. And so. It's not a situation where you, you're going to be a, a star or something. Yeah. You know. yeah. But, uh, you never can tell. It, it may catch on nationally. I never expected to become a star overnight like Johnny Cash. But the reason I made this album is I think I have a style that's different. And the only way that people ever hear this is to buy the music, buy the record, they never find me in these valleys. So most generally I'm hid back in the woods there on old stone walls. And the stonework, it'll have to go on all quite a long time yet to even pay for my first album. The last one in this area is the play walls. And I think around the New England area too. There might be some people that lay little walls. I lay walls day after day, week in, week out, and year in and year out. easy. The hard part is going back in the woods and taking the old stone out. The old brush and all down under the old thing. The nice part of the stone is to see the walls grow. Lay them up and get longer and bigger and so they really show. Just as long as the day, old bones ache all night long. And you gotta get up and lug stone all day long. It'll just be a drag going towards fall. Right after the potato harvest. You know, it's going to snow, and I have to hurry up and get around and finish up my job done with stonework, and get back to the old log cabin for the winter and limber up my fingers on the old fiddle and wait for spring to come again.
Robertson, the Eagle Bridge came up. We might add that Mr. Robertson in his own right is a champion square dance caller in addition to his fiddle artistry. Square dances, weddings, real old time get togethers. A lot of these people who never been to a square dance are really missing out on this. Everybody has a lot of fun here. I've played here in this hall since I was nine years old and started calling square dances. Sister Dorothy Ann, she plays with me. We're going to have a great time here. My father, he's in the back years and Joey said, My first time, he says, Joey said, You want to keep that up? He said, You're going to be a real good caller. So I kept the old fiddle going for years now. Get these fellas to really tap on their toes. Always have to warm them up. Hurts to have a few drinks. Everybody that get a few drinks down there. Wouldn't know the difference anyway, whether you're playing all Nelly Gray or Zip Cool. <laughs> Time to in. <laughs> Real bone player. He got the old spoons going on there. He's the top man in White Creek. He can really rattle him. Double the spare tire on him there, too. <laughs>
He works on the fiddles all the time there and takes them, takes them on the old barn, barn boards and got the barn so that's pretty falling down. <laughs> stone back up and so it looked like it did about 200 years ago. Years ago, you used to be able to see stone walls all over. They had a lot of sheep back then and they kept all the brush and stuff ate down. You get up on the hill and look off and it looked just like a puzzle. It was really pretty. One reason is I like to do this work. It's like my music. I'm kind of free back here from the south. 
little different than these factories. You can get killed just quick in the factories. All smoke and dust breathing that stuff all the time. It's a lot nicer out here in the country. I went back to the stones. I really like stones. In fact, years ago, you used to be able to see stone walls all over. They had a lot of sheep back then. They cut all the brush and stuff, ate down. You get up on the hill and look off. You look at like a puzzle. It's really pretty. Then I come along. Into the 50s, and the farmers, they all had to get more cows, and they said, well, we got to bulldoze them damn stone out, make all these fields bigger. You know, they went to bulldoze these up in the 60s, they got so they didn't stone all around. So I said, yeah, here I am trying to build these stones back up and so it looked like it did about 200 years ago. in this area to lay walls. I think around the New England area too. There might be some people that lay a little wall, but I lay walls day after day, week in, week out, year in, year out. I normally work out six hours a day. It's much lifting and lugging at this. Most of this work, I, well, all of this work I do for city people who have a lot of money. And they like this big double walls, some triple walls, really fancy work. I have fun retaining walls for them. It's looks really nice. And it's Seven dollars an hour, just well, pretty good pay up here. But when you can't work only a few hours a day, and then we get rainy weather, and you're off on the rainy weather too. So on average out, you don't really make much of it. so they don't rock around and they're not going to fall out. You have to make sure your ground is level where you start the base of your wall. There's always the right side for your stone and the wrong side. You build these walls up right. They'll last at least 50 years without having any problems at all. There's a lot of the old timers that built walls there. But Walls have been there for a hundred years and they're still standing just as true as they were when they laid them. The nice part of 
the stone, you see the walls grow. Lay them up and get longer and bigger. And so they really show. The new design is just to be an awful bag, day in and day out. The nights are just as long as the day. Old bones ache all night long. And you gotta get up and blood stone all day long. And you just see a drag along towards fall. back in the woods and digging the old stone out of the old brush and all down under every old thing. People, they kind of snicker and say they can't believe it. I weigh 160 pounds and rats are all rocks that weigh 500 pounds. I tell them it's just mind over matter. goes into this stonework. Work at it lugging day in, day out, week in, week out. Work from the time the snow goes out in the spring till the snows in the fall. And a year ago there tore a muscle off my back there, ripped just like an old coon hide. I finally realized I have to get out of the stone business. So I don't want to be crippled up like my grandfather and the old timers around there is all crippled up with arthritis, broken fingers. Hips out of joint. Grandfather, he had a hip out of joint. One finger stuck right straight out. So I figured, well, I can't keep going on this way. So maybe if I take it kind of easy, I can sit around and play the old fiddle when I get older. It was well enough. I had to get out and try to pedal these records. Go around from store to store, running around from town to town in this territory. Pretty hard. Played around here 35 years and went these places and asked the people to take a few records, trying to sell them, you know. They say, God, don't know what it is. So I know, they most of them take a few of them, so. But I made up my mind that I have to pedal some, try to get my music going. So I hurt my back in the winter there, I don't know how I'll be able to go back to the stonework in the spring or not, so it really makes quite a drag. I was go back to the mountains, get away from this turmoil. Half a day of pedaling records while I get out of town and get back into the country. Take the little town of Cambridge there. It looks nice from the outside, but underneath it's quite a lot different. Well, the only time the people really know me is when they want me to play. They say, we'll get old Joe. And He'll do it for us. Oh, I really want to get back and 
make your way back in the woods, back to the old log cabin there. It's nice and quiet. I'm cooking here. Everything you eat, hunting, shooting. It's taught not to waste anything, so I don't shoot anything on it when I'm going to eat. And I don't miss. Once in a while, that is, I make a little mistake because I cracked it right in a few minutes here. <laughs> so, get that old stove pipe going. It's really pleasant around here, but it gets awful lonely if you're alone all the time back in this country. Okay, sit down. I made up this song about how long they can really get back here. In my little green shack on the hill, it's where my baby left me all alone and still. Cried when she left me, I beg you do not go. From my little green shack on the hill, it's a quiet and she's gone. You can hear the wind blow like a song, saying that she's never coming back. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's like walking in a dream. I know it's all lonely in my little green shack. That she loved the shack, she did not love me. Said that she never coming back. Here said all alone, wonder where she's gone. In our little green shack. It's a quiet and she's gone. You can hear the wind blow like song, saying that she never coming back. Don't know what I'm doing, it's like walking in a dream. I know it's all lonely in that little green shack. The only time of year I really take off is deer season. I like the back and getting off venison for the winter. I get back in, way back out of, out of the site there, and get away from them city hunters. Run into small looking characters back in there, these old wood choppers. And all these old fellas, they got all broken down, and lugging around, you know. I see seven. He just had one bunch now. He started out funding the bunch, Mark, and this one. They're blowing there. Right out in the open field over there. We were up there in <laughs> West Arlington this morning. At least I got one last year on Sunday morning. Right up in, right up in here on this hall there. Mm -hmm. Look at the lower road. Want to go down around the brook? Yeah. And I'll get up on that pit there. He just looked up on him back and someone mixed with one. A little snow about like this on one Sunday morning. Hmm. I see a buck right over. Jesus, it was over this, over this ridge here, it gets right down to the hollow. Mm -hmm. There's a brook, I think so, so this is broken down to there. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Jesus Christ. And I looked at side hill all and I couldn't see that. Jesus, I didn't take one, two steps, looked upon the bank, Jesus said he was going. Jesus, he was a big one. So I opened up on him, I got some hair. Bring us to him up there, and he said, too far, he knew, he said, he never seen a bigger button again. My car was parked right up in this hollow. And that someone did come within 20 feet in front of my car on the top row. And I stopped the hole over there. Okay, who is this? Okay. I'm going to have to drag these out. By the way, they put a long time to drag them down with them. They're not too far back. Take them down and dress them off, skin them off, just push them. 
Time to get that animal to eat out. I don't hunt for pleasure alone. I hunt the meat. So we use all the meat. Well, I don't use it, take it to my father's. He's so old and he don't get out and hunt no more, so. Right after I get my venison, I have to get back in the mole truck and run around and try to finish up these walls that I've been working on all summer. The snow's coming on. And has to get those finished for the winter. The old rocks, they keep getting heavier and heavier. fellow that really like to take this work up because I'd like to pass it on. Because when I'm gone and done with this stuff, there won't be anybody that will take on this stonework. I've had all 20 some men trying to help me. And they all work about a week or so and they're all done. The back caves in eat them cornflakes, and they're all tired out about half past ten in the morning. Then finally I found a man, a big rugged fella, and weighed about two thirty. I said, my God, he's just the fellow I've been looking for. Uh, I guess we're going along good, run along oh, about two weeks. We sat down one of them to eat dinner, and he said, God, Joe, he said, I'm going to quit. He said, it's a lot easier work, he said, than them stone. I said, God, I said, you just come along good. <laughs> he said, it's a lot easier work than that. And that was the last man I had. man I had to help me out in the stone. And that's probably the way it's going to be. respect for those old timers. All the walls they laid, worked day in, day out, worked for years, building those walls up. Then these fellows, they get an idea they want to change the road around, bulldoze them all in, you know, look, you never know there was a stone there. I don't want this to happen to me. So I'd like to be remembered for stone walls I built. All the work I put into them, I'd hate to see them bulldoze down. So, neither be my music or my stone I'd like to be remembered by. I kind of like to grow old and be able to sit back and still play the fiddle.
Maggie and some big rugged fellow that really liked to take this work up because I'd like to pass it down. Because when I'm gone and done with this stuff, there won't be anybody that will take on this stonework. I've had all 20 some men trying to help me. They all worked about a week or so, and they're all done. The back caves in. Eat them cornflakes, and they're all tired out about half past ten in the morning. And I had, he was coming right along real good. He was pretty big and rugged, weighed about 230. And I said, he's going to make me a real good man. So, we worked all. About a week and a half on the stone room. I said, yeah, and he'll really make me a man. Put him on, I guess I'll look right here. Come along to two weeks and we sat down to eat dinner one day. And said, yeah, and Joey said, them damn stones lay right there. He said, I can find easier work than that. I said, my God, you just come along good. He said, well, he said, it's easier work than that. And that was the last man I had. <laughs> that used to be my last day, Joe. It ain't worth it, shit. Two fifty an hour. God, I thought you were just getting in shape. Yeah. I've known through this for 20 years and you're in shape. <laughs> well, that's up to you. Yeah. Um, I just don't care that much for it, you know? It's too hard to work. Well, all the fellas and all say the same thing. Look and strain every minute. Yep. I thought I'd get somebody who won't be really interested in this stuff. I'll have to run up something else, I guess. No hard feelings? No. Sorry. This is the last man I had to help me out in the stone. And that's probably the way it's going to be. respect for those old timers. All the walls they laid, worked day in, day out, worked for years, building those walls up. Then these fellows, they get an idea they want to change the road around, bulldoze them all in, you know, look, you never know there was a stone there. I don't want this to happen to me. I'd like to be remembered for stone walls I built, all the work I put into them. I'd hate to see them bulldoze down. So, it'd either be my music and my stone I'd like to be remembered by, 
I'm kind of like to grow old and be able to sit back and still play the fiddle. Mind back to fight, so 
I went ahead and I started working on that. And worked all my life playing the square dances. And Sister Dorothy, she plays with me all the time. Oh, mother and father, they both they saw on the fiddle little too. Music all through the family. And well, I finally got up about 40 years old. I said, boy, I'm not getting no younger. And muscles all pulled out and wrestling rocks. And I said, we're gonna better try to make a record. See if I can get something easier going here. So, I said, well, couldn't get anybody to help me. And I said, no, I'll pay for it out of my own pocket if I have to. Well, I finally called up the Beers family and they give me a phone number and I got a hold of this company and worked all about a year in order to get my first record out. I guess that's about the right. charge for the thousand records it's eighteen hundred and fifty dollars mm -hmm. okay now uh, usually what happens is is uh, the artist pays the whole thing mm -hmm. and then we can get it right into production uh, we have in the past um, allowed the people to pay half uh, as he starts the record and half when he gets the record mm -hmm. that that's uh, seems to work out pretty well too so you me is there for me to Never getting money back and something like that? <laughs> I think definitely, yeah. Uh, especially if you have a thousand records um, and you will be buying them from us for about a dollar eighty-five a piece, mm -hmm. okay? And you'll sell them probably for nothing less than four fifty or five dollars, mm -hmm. okay? So to get that money back, you only have to sell three hundred and fifty records. Take me a year to make that much money. Yeah. That's okay. Situation where you, you're going to be a, a star or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you never can tell. It, it may catch on nationally. I never expected to become a star overnight like Johnny Cash. But the reason I made this album is I think I have a style that's different. And the only way that people ever hear this is to buy the music, buy the record, because they never find me in these valleys. So most of I'm hid back in the woods there on old stone walls. And the stonework has had to go on oh, quite a long time yet to even pay for my first album. It's my last one in this area to play walls. And I think around New England area too. There might be some people that lay a little wall. I lay wall day after day, week in, week out, and year in and year out.
have to stay the harvest. You know, it's going to snow. And I have to hurry up and get around and finish up my jobs on the stonework. And get back to the old log cabin for the winter and limber up my fingers on the old fiddle and wait for spring to come again. Robertson is all right as a champion square dance caller in addition to his fiddle artistry. One is time for old square dances, weddings, real old time get togethers. All you people who have never met the square dance are really messing out on us. Everybody has a lot of fun here. I played near to this hall since I was nine years old and I started calling square dances. <laughs> He works on the fiddles all the time there and takes them off in the old barn, barn boards and got the barn so that's pretty falling down. <laughs> Stone and lay in the. I'll begin to wonder. All right, being foolish or. Ah, let's get back at this work. God, here I am trying to build these stones back up. And... Oh, it looks like it. 
did about 200 years ago. Years ago, you used to be able to see stone walls all over. I had a lot of sheep back then. They kept all the brush and stuff ate down. You get up on the hill and look off, and it looked just like a puzzle. It was really pretty. One reason is I like to do this work. It's like my music. I'm kind of free back here from the south. It's a little different than these factories. You can get killed just quick from the factories. All the smoke and dust and that stuff all the time. It's a lot nicer out here in the country. People don't realize the work and effort goes into this stonework. Work uh, lugging day in, day out, week in, week out. Work from the time the snow goes out in the spring till the snow in the fall. And a year ago there, tore a muscle off my back there, ripped just like an old coon hide. I finally realized that I have to get out of the stone business, so I don't want to be crippled up like my grandfather. And the old timers around, there, it's all crippled up with arthritis, broken fingers, hips out of joint. My grandfather, he had a hip out of joint. One finger stuck right straight out. So I figured, well, I can't keep going on this way. So maybe if I take it kind of easy, I can sit around and play the old fiddle when I get older. I was well enough, I had to get out and try to peddle these records. Go around from store to store. Running around from town to town in this territory. Pretty hard. Played around here 35 years and quit these places and asked the people to take a few records trying to sell them, you know. They say, God, don't know whether they was selling or not, but they most of them take a few of them. So I made up my mind that I had to pedal some try to get my music going. So I hurt my back in the winter there. I don't know how I'll be able to go back to my stonework in the spring or not. So. It really makes quite a drag. I rather than back to the mountains. Get away from this turmoil. There. It looks nice from the outside, but underneath it's quite a lot different. About the only time the people really know me is when they want me to play. They say, we well, get old Joe and he'll do it for us. Oh, I really want to get back and get way back in the woods, back to my old log cabin there. It's nice and quiet. <laughs> Everything you eat, hunting, shooting. It's taught not to waste anything, so I don't shoot anything on what I'm gonna need. And I don't miss. Once in a while, that is, I make a little mistake, but I correct it right in a few minutes here. <laughs> so, get that old stove press going. It's really pleasant around here, but it gets awful lonely if you're alone all the time back in this country. So one day I sat down and made up this song about how lonely it can really get back here. In my little green shack on the hill It's where my baby left me all alone sitting still 
when she left me, I beg you do not go. From the little green shack on the hill, it's a quiet and she's gone. You can hear the wind blow like a song, saying that she's never coming back. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but it's like walking in a dream. I know it's all lonely in that little green shack. Love the she did not love me, except that she never coming back. Here's said all the love and wonder where she's gone, in our little green shack. It's in quiet since she's gone, you can hear the wind blow like song, saying that she never coming back. Yeah, I really take off. It's deer season. I like the back and getting off bouncing for the winter. I get back in, way back out of, out of the sight there, get away from them city hunters, run into small looking characters back in there, these old wood choppers, and all these old fellas, they got all broken down and lugging around, you know. Just mind over matter. I'm always looking for help. I'd like to get some big rugged fellow that really like to take this work up because I'd like to pass it down. Because when I'm gone and done with this stuff, there won't be anybody that will take on this stonework. I've had all 20 some men trying to help me. 
They all work about a week or so. And they're all done. The back caves in. Eat them cornflakes and they're all tired out about half past ten in the morning. And finally I found a man. Big rugged fella and weighed about two to thirty. I said, thank God. He's just the fellow I've been looking for. You know, we're going along good, run along oh, about two weeks. And we sat down one noon to eat dinner. And he said, Yeah, Joe, he said, I'm going to quit. He said, It's a lot easier work, he said, than them stones. I said, well, God, I said, You just come along good. <laughs> he said, It's a lot easier work than that. And that was the last man I had. stone. That's probably the way it's going to be. respect for those old timers. All the walls they laid, worked day in, day out, worked for years, building those walls up. Then these fellows, they get an the idea they want to change the road around, bulldoze them all in, you know, look, you never know there was a stone there. I don't want this to happen to me. I'd like to be remembered for stone walls I've built, all the work I've put into them. I'd hate to see them bulldoze down. It'd either be my music or my stone I'd like to be remembered by. I'd kind of like to grow old and be able to sit back and still play the fiddle. <laughs> Funding for this program was provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. <coughs> <coughs>